Hi, welcome back. Ricky Reeves here again in this segment called Let's Review the Chromatic Scale. So here we will focus on hand position as we review one, two, three octave chromatic scale and patterns, okay? So, I've created my own system here, a uh, fingering system, for, to make it easier. We've talked about in the, in the other sessions about left and right hands, uh, left and right hand and pinkies. This has an indication of which pinkies to use in which hand. So, I'm gonna go over this very, very quickly. Um, the first note here is a low E, the very lowest note of the instrument and it has an L1, which identifies the left one key that we called left hand one or L1, okay? That starts with all the fingers down in your L1 key. I think you already know this. The next note would be an F, which would be fingered with R2. So you would just lift your left pinky and you'd have your right pinky down. The next note would be L2, which would be the left side, the left pinky again. Then we have a G, which I think we all know that. Then we have G sharp, also known as A flat coming down if you're, if you're descending. But for the sake of uh, the session, we're just doing the, uh, the sharps going up. That's labeled as R1. And then A, A sharp, which I indicated with the first finger, which is the same as B flat, obviously, but uh, in the bottom hand, first finger. So, you know, anything below this ledger line is the right hand or bottom hand. And then I put an FK that indicates fork. So, A sharp, first, fork, B, natural. And then C, C sharp, I indicated as L4 because we talked about earlier, one, two, three, four keys on the left-hand side that the pinky uses, and this is the L4, or C-sharp, or G-sharp key, okay? And then we have D, and then D-sharp. I indicate D-sharp this way, thumb, one, two, and side key, the bottom side key, the first side key. And I'm counting the side keys as one, two, three, four. So the first one is there at the very bottom, which is our D-sharp E-flat key. The other way to play that would be the little banana key here. Um, both ways are acceptable, but I'm, for the sake of the segment here, I'm using the SK1, okay? And then one octave is E. First line E, and that's just thumb and first. So from the bottom, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. That's one octave. And here you have the second octave in green, starting with that E that we ended with. E, same notes, F, F sharp. Here I indicated the two side keys, S, K, one and two, with the F for your F sharp. That's your chromatic F sharp, so it would be F, and you add the two side keys, one, two together to get the F sharp. And then G, G sharp, A, A sharp again is B flat. And then B, you cross that break where the third line, where the break happens again. And this pattern starts over again as it does, uh, starts over like it does here. L1, R2, L2. When you get to B, the only difference is you have a register, register key added so instead of an E, you're getting a B, natural. And then C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, okay? Make sure we get all of that in there. So the pattern repeats itself once you get to the third line. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Same fingers, same finger patterns. The only difference is you have a register key added for the upper notes. 
And the third octave starts on E, fourth space E, goes to first finger, which is F natural, and then fork again, F sharp, again repeating ourselves that we, we did here. G, G sharp, L4, just like the low C sharp here. A, A sharp, same as D sharp, SK1, side key one. B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp indicated by the fork, which would be here. And then E is your last note. Okay? So, if you notice, I put these all in whole notes just to make it easier to read and to see. However, you can choose whatever pattern, rhythm pattern you'd like to, to play with. But to begin with, just to review, we're gonna do one octave at a time, okay? So I'm gonna play the first octave for you, the lowest octave. was the first octave. I'm going to go back and do that again for you. I'm going to do it in quarter notes. Okay, that was that first row, first octave. Then we're going to do the second octave, the green, starting on first line E. Now, I know this is just a review for most of you, but for those that are learning the chromatic scale, this is a great way to think about uh, how the pattern works and not have to worry so much about learning so many notes or so many uh, fingerings, because they all repeat themselves. Let's do that octave in quarter notes. altissimo register. Well, we start the clarion, clarion register and goes up to the altissimo register to high E. It's in red. And again, notice the fingerings here. down and it didn't go go I didn't descend I just ascended or went up but you should practice going down as well now what should happen at this point we've done all three octaves and using all chromatic fingerings we're gonna put together a little exercise for you and this is what I like to call the uh, articulation chromatic exercise so what happens is I have all my students do 
various articulations, uh, up to nine actually. And the first one I just did for you was all tongued. The way the pattern works is you do the same articulation going up uh, as you do coming down, you do the same articulation going up and coming down. For example, I just did all of that tongue, then I'm gonna do the next uh, next one in, in the uh, exercise way, the way that we do it as our warm up. So I'm gonna slur up and slur down. I'm gonna do each octave the way we do it in, in our lessons, okay? <laughs> So you noticed I stopped on each octave going up, took a breath, and at the very top, came all the way down without stopping. So the idea is that you do this with all of the, the, the various articulations. And of course, obviously, the better you know it, the faster you can go. So let's try um, slur four. I'll go a little faster. But what you're doing is you're just reinforcing what you already know. You're just playing your chromatic pattern over and over, and you're learning to articulate various patterns at the same time. Okay, slur four. <laughs> So, as you become more advanced, uh, and most of you, because this is for second and third year players, you should be playing at least that tempo, if not faster. And then the next one would be slur three, tongue one. <laughs> change that by doing uh, tongue one slur three so you're just turning the pattern around <laughs> So as you can see, this goes on and on with the various articulations. So the nine that we do, the nine articulations is slur all, tongue all, slur four, slur three, tongue one, tongue one, slur three, tongue one, slur two, tongue one. So it's all based on four note patterns, four note groupings. Uh, tongue one, slur two, tongue one, and then slur two, slur two, slur two, tongue two, and tongue two, slur two. Okay, so I'm gonna just write those here on the board for you so that you can see those. And I'll do a little shorthand. It's gonna be tongue all, slur all, 
slur four. Slur three, tongue one. Tongue one, slur three. Tongue one, slur two, tongue one. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that should be slur two, slur two. Slur two, tongue two. And last but not least, tongue two, slur two. So these are your various articulation patterns that you can use for your chromatic scale exercise there. Okay, this is a great exercise to start with each and every day as part of your the warm up for yourselves and for your uh, sections. It teaches you great skill on knowing all the all the notes on the instrument, reinforcing again what you already know but it's also teaching you various articulation patterns. And the idea is that when you do all these different articulation patterns, all nine, tongue all, slur all, slur four, slur three, tongue one, tongue one, slur three, tongue one, slur two, tongue one, slur two, slur two, slur two, tongue two, and tongue two, slur two. The idea is when you see these in music, when you're sight reading, you're not thrown at all by this because you've warmed up with it every day and it's part of your, your daily routine. So it makes a big difference when you're learning to sight read and you know all these different patterns. It makes it easier for you and less to think about when you're playing. Think about your fingers more than anything else and think about where you are in the notes, the keys, the key signature that you're playing in. Um, the last thing is we wanna make sure that we have good hand position as well. So I didn't point this out earlier, but as you're playing your chromatic, scale again as in earlier sessions you want to make sure you keep your hands uh, your fingers rounded and the knuckles raised high so just to review that a little bit see if i can get my camera a little bit lower for you if I did all nine or not I tried <laughs> I may have missed a couple but the idea is that the fingers remained pretty much in the same place everything every articulation was the same tempo and you're making sure the fingers respond and react the same way no matter what the articulation is this is a great exercise good for good for many things good for articulation good for fingers and just good for listening to make sure all the notes are even and evenly played so as you do this, start slow and work your way up to whatever speed is, is um, you know, accessible for you. Again, as you age and as you continue to grow as musicians and mature, you can play faster. And the faster, the easier for you. We'll make it easy, okay? 
I hope that you've enjoyed this session on let's review the chromatic scale and maybe gotten some patterns. You now you can create your own, your own your own patterns as well if you find different ways to do this, just so that you're um, uh, reinforcing what you already know once again. Okay. Hope you've enjoyed this session and uh, I've enjoyed uh, presenting it to you. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.